period for a torsion pendulum. So, uh, it's also known as an angular simple harmonic oscillator. Whoa, that's a lot of words. So, to ease the pain of this particular derivation, uh, I listed some stuff. Here we have the rotational inertia of the disc, 9.07 times 10 to the negative 3 kilograms meters squared. We have the torsion constant, beta, 9.4 times 10 to the negative 2 newton meter radians per radian. Um, I did calculate these. These, are, these come from actual values that I collected here based on this apparatus. And I'll explain the apparatus shortly. Uh, the mass of the disc, 1.5 kilograms. The radius of the disc, uh, 0 0.11 meters. Uh, alpha and omega, I've got two substitutions that are necessary uh, to remember. Uh, one is, this is the second derivative of the uh, displacement function for simple harmonic motion. Uh, alpha is equal to minus omega squared theta, and this is the angular frequency, which we are subsequently going to substitute for omega. Omega is equal to 2 pi over the period. Now, the apparatus. You may recognize this, uh, this disc, and here, suspended, this is suspended by a coat hanger that I just, it's a standard coat hanger that I disassembled and straightened out. And if you notice, if I go through a, an angular displacement, and then release, I twisted the coat hanger, and the coat hanger is going to oscillate back and forth. So the resistance to the continuous body's change in state of rotation uh, causes this thing to move past each time it's called natural state, as opposed to natural length in terms of a spring. All right, so this, uh, this, uh, this disc is gonna continually twist the, the coat hanger. Isn't that cool? And notice that is exhibiting simple harmonic motion. One, two, three, four. I couldn't tell you if that was actually one, two, three, four seconds, but soon we're gonna find out. All right, let's start with, uh, since this is a rotating system, uh, we're gonna start with Newton's second law, it's angular equivalent. The sum of the torques equals I alpha. And the angular equivalent to Hooke's law, which is torque is equal to minus theta theta. Uh, Hooke's law, restoring force is equal to Kx. The rotational equivalent, torque, is equal to beta theta. Whereby in Hooke's law, K is the spring constant and beta is the torsion constant for this apparatus. So, manipulating these two expressions, we're gonna substitute uh, minus beta theta in for this expression. We're only using one torque, by the way. So, uh, beta minus beta theta is equal to I alpha. All right, let's start with our substitutions. Uh, we have alpha. Omega squared theta. Uh, it looks like we can make some cancellations. So the theta cancels as well as the negative sign. And I'm now going to substitute the angular frequency, 2 pi over the period, for omega. So it'll be i, uh, and then say 2 pi over the period, quantity squared. Not bad. Now, uh, I'm going to assume that you know algebra and we're gonna take this expression and solve it in terms of the period T. So T is equal to two pi times the square root of the angular equivalence of mass. If you remember the, uh, the period of oscillation for a mass at, at the end of a spring, which was the square root of M over K, uh, for a rotating system, this torsion, the angular equivalent to mass would be I. It should not come as a surprise the rotational equivalent of k, m over k, i over beta. All right, uh, magic again. Uh, I did use my HP. This was uh, constructed in 1986. This is 2020 plus, if you happen to be watching this video a few years after being published. Uh, 
if you plug this stuff in, especially I and beta, you get approximately 1.94 seconds. Okay, so that's the theoretical period. Theoretical equation with some things substituted. Um, you get the, I guess you want to call it a, uh, the predicted period of oscillation. Now, let me explain uh, a little bit how I came about the beta, uh, the torsion constant. Uh, solving for beta, torque to, uh, divided by theta. Now, torque is R cross F. Uh, so it was this expression uh, that I used to uh, measure the radius of the disk. This is the force applied, and this is the angle at which I twisted the disk. That's the angular displacement. Now, I have here three flavors of spring scales. Right? Um, this was two, not enough spring constant. Uh, oh, still, not enough. And, oh, that's the right one. Okay. So uh, it's, it's, it is trial and error. So if I pull on this disc, maintaining a perpendicular direction of the applied force through an angle of pi over 2 or 90 degrees, I'm reading approximately 1.35 newtons. All right, so the force applied times the, the radius divided by the angular displacement in radians, pi over two, out pops 9.4 times 10 to the negative two newton meters per radian. All right, let's compare that estimated value to the actual value. So I'm going to set this disk into oscillation, just displace a little bit and let it oscillate. And I'm going to use my stopwatch on my phone. Here we go. Um, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Notice uh, five oscillations total of 9.68 seconds. So I, I'm, I'm okay with math, but I always like to check it. Uh, so we have 9.68 seconds divided by 5. Holy cow. Oh my gosh, you're not going to believe this. One point nine three six. I'm not making this up. I'm serious. Look at that. A coat hanger. A rigid body. Physics works. I love this. All right. So uh, I, I am a little excited. You know, between 5%, I would be fine with 5% difference. But I'm getting a lot closer to 1%, maybe less than 1%. You figure out the percent difference. So there you have it. I'm going to stand back. So if you need to uh, stop the video and behold, there you go. Now for my outro.